Hello, this is Mr. Ferreira, and this is the first in a series of videos to go through the content covered in the ALIP Psychology, the Social Influence topic. Now, this is the specification which you'll find in the front cover of your notebook, and you'll see that it's very important that we have a good understanding of where things are going with the specification, especially look at the use of words. Now, just to break this down very quickly, we see that the, we look at conformity in quite a lot of depth and ends with the Zimbardi study, um, which was part of the summer task and definitely worth you having a look at as the, the role of Zimbardi in that experiment is important for the baseline assessment. We also look at obedience and what we notice is that both the obedience and conformity look at something called um, situational variables. We see we have variables there um, which affect both conformity and obedience. We then move to an explanation that is called dispositional and we have a structure that says okay so part of what we are as a person, our disposition, is the reason why we do either the conformity or the obedience. Now this is the majority of the course, it takes us up until about Christmas and then we end with minority influence and social change. Very interesting topic and certainly could be relevant to a lot of the situation we find with things like Black Lives Matters and the LGBTQ community. So you don't have to memorize the specification, but it's certainly worth having a look at it when you are coming down to revision because it will tell us what the exam board, which is AQA, can ask us in the exam. So there we have a kind of breakdown of the course. We also saw from the front cover that there is this shock machine and we see, you know, quite extreme words there, danger, severe shock. And, and that should kind of give you some kind of clue as to where this course is going, what we're looking at. We're looking at things where people do try and understand human behavior in a social context. So one of the things I like to do is to give a definition, and this is the definition of social influence. It comes from Mike Cardwell. This is not a name that you need to learn because it's just telling us a bit about what social influence is. And I suppose the main thing we can have a look at here, it says that social influence refers to various processes. Okay, so we can be looking at more than one process and we see from the specification that it says majority and minority influences. Now, of course, there are other processes that could be involved in social influence, but that's not kind of part of the course. We then also see that a, a key word here is this idea of modified. So what we're going to say about social influence is that our attitudes, beliefs and behaviours can be modified by the presence of others. Now that's what social influence is. So we're going to be looking at these processes and seeing how they modify potential attitudes and or beliefs. So as an introduction to this kind of idea, I want us to watch a video. It doesn't always start straight away, but let's see if we can get it going. And I want you to think about what is going on. Making an excuse for turning just a little bit more <laughs> to the wall. Now we'll try it once again. Here's the candid subject. Here comes the candid camera staff. <laughs> Here's a fella with his hat on in the elevator. First he makes a full turn to the rear and Charlie closes the door. A moment later, we'll open the door. Everybody's changed positions. <laughs> now we'll see if we can use see if we can use group pressure for some good. Now, in a moment, on Charlie's signal, everybody turns forward. Notice, they take off their hats. And now, do you
do you think we could reverse the procedure? Watch. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed that particular video. video. It is meant to be funny. But what we saw were, were three men who got into a lift. And then the people who were part of the show came in and they all did the same behavior and were influenced in some ways. And, and social influence or social influence re research can be as simple as this. Try to just to understand simple behavior in the lift. Or it could be a lot more complex. So we do say that the research that we, are be, that we will be looking at and that social influence has produced, it says here, some of the most startling insights into human behavior. Because it's often when we are in a group that we tend to see that people's behavior becomes interesting. And certainly if we look at kind of how trends have gone over the past few years and how people are acting during the pandemic, that potentially this type of research is going to be incredibly important to us. So I hope you've enjoyed kind of the basic understanding of where this course is going and looked at the specification to kind of understand the content and then also thought a bit about kind of what social influence is in the bigger picture. Now moving on to the first part of the course. The first part of the course is asking us to look at conformity. Now, of course, this is majority influence. We don't conform when there isn't a majority. And so it has a simple definition that says conformity is a form of social influence, which is reassuring because I've been speaking about social influence. But it says results from the exposure to the majority position. OK, so I would feel or we would say that you don't conform if you haven't been exposed to the majority position. If it's a behavior that you would ordinarily do, the chances are that it's not going to be as a result as to exposure to the majority position. Though, of course, the exposure may be something which we think about more than actually being in the presence of. So we need to think about, about kind of this behavior that if I think everybody's doing something and I'm going to be different, well, that's the same as exposure because we're exposure to the concept that we're going to be judged by people. It then says that when we are exposed to the majority position, it, conformity leads to compliance with that position. Now, compliance is a new word, and some of you might have spotted it's part of the types of conformity. And so this is a simple form of conformity. And we see that actually compliance, it says here, is the tendency to people to adopt the behavior to fit in with the with the group. So it says here, it's a tendency for people to adopt the behavior of the reference group. OK, so we're not conforming if we don't adopt. If we do adopt, then we are conforming or we're com being compliant in that particular way. Now, another thing that we see there is that it's not just about behavior. It can also be about attitudes and values that we adopt. Now, this particular uh, uh, definition comes from Mike Cardwell and Clara Flanagan, two prom prominent members of the A-level psychology kind of, uh, kind of authors who write textbooks. And therefore, it's quite a nice, good definition to have. So now let's look at the specification regarding conformity. It says we need to look at types of conformity, internalization, identification, and compliance. If something is named, like it is there, it means that they can ask us what it is and explain what it is. They could also ask us to identify somebody who is internalizing something. So they'll give us a scenario, and we have to be able to say, what it is. So therefore, we need to be very careful that we're able to name, explain, and kind of apply types of conformity in this particular context. So let's look at the first type of conformity. I actually start with compliance because it is the one that I've mentioned previously. Now, all I want to say about this particular slide 
is that Kalman is the person who came up with this. This is also a name that we once again don't need to remember because it's not part of what we need to do. It doesn't say name who comes up with this. It says just be able to talk about it. So compliance. A compliance is quite simply, it says here, when an individual goes along with the group. So we saw from the definition previously that a person is com conforming or being compliant when they are exposed to the group and they adopt the behavior of that group. Now what it does say, it's in order to gain approval. Now approval becomes quite important in this particular context. Now of course, it does say there, or avoid disapproval, and that's because I want you to kind of obviously kind of get that, that sometimes we do our behavior in order to ensure that people don't think we're not okay, and that's the avoid the disappro disapproval part. Now that's a quite a simple um, kind of one mark type of answer. Of course, compliance goes a little bit deeper than this. And we see there that the reason that we would go along with the group is because of this concept of social comparison. This is quite important. It says we focus on what others are doing or saying, and we adjust our actions to fit in. Okay, so it's quite important that this gives us the, the depth of understanding. The third aspect of compliance, it says here, it's only on the surface. So therefore, this is quite superficial. If something is on the surface, it doesn't go deep. And it involves kind of fitting in. And it says here that it is just simply public and not private. OK, so therefore, what is important here is to think about the reference group. And we find that when we're in the presence of the group, we comply. And when we're not in the presence of the group, we are not complying. So it's probably good for you to think of a few examples. Okay, so an example could be that I join a new school and or I go to the sixth form for the first time and there's a particular group that I start kind of hanging out with or kind of talking to and they all seem to to be doing something like maybe it's their language they start they often swear when they're in conversation and they use kind of vulgar language that I may not use myself so I am complying if I then adopt their language to fit in so if I am the person that also then starts swearing or starts using vulgar language in their presence now, of course, it's only compliance if when I leave the group, say I go home or I go to a different group of people and I then um, go back to my normal language, I stop swearing. OK, that's a type of example. Now, you could think of other examples as well. The second explanation was, so the second type of conformity that we will look at is internalization. And you'll see from the old spec, compliance and internalization were the two main ones that we get focused on. And therefore, probably the ones that we are, end up becoming most familiar with. Now, this is different to compliance. And it says that we go along. So we're still going along. OK, so we still because this is about conformity, but we're doing it because we've accepted the point of view. OK, so we've. We are doing what other people are doing because it's now what we believe. So we've internalized it. Now, at this time, it says the reason for this is this idea that we engage in a process called validation, where we kind of want to be right. OK, we want to see if our beliefs are right. It's kind of like if I meet somebody and I talk about something and they're like, oh, yeah, I've seen that show. I really think it's cool and stuff like that. It kind of makes us feel good. OK, so this time conformity is as a result of being exposed to views of others. OK, and then I go, oh, yeah, OK, I actually think that those are the, my own beliefs. Those are the beliefs I want to adopt. So we internalize them. Now, of course, if this has happened, it says here that we accept the group's point of view. OK. 
and um, it ends up being both public and private. So this time around, um, if we think of examples, we've got to think of examples where ultimately we become the type of person that that the group's behavior could be. Now this is slightly, say, more complex, okay? So for example, I think I used an example in one of my lessons about maybe if I'm in the presence of people who are talking about how they hate cats and how they um, kind of, you know, you know, they want to eat you and they look at you funny and, and all these types of things, okay? So maybe at first I might comply and go, yeah, yeah, I agree, the you know, cats are nasty and stuff like that, okay? Um, and, and of course, um, when I go home, I go to my own cats and say, oh, I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have been mean about you, Monty, I really love you, that type of stuff, okay? But that's obviously not internalization. If after a while, I am no longer kind of complying and I'm actually thinking, well, hang on, they've got a point. This is something which I agree. Maybe I get a bad experience with a cat or, or something along those lines and I adopt their view. Then it's both become public and private. And of course, I go home this time and I'm kind of hating on my cat. Now, I've used a silly example there because often this is what happens with prejudice. People internalize the prejudice. They get exposed to a majority position or a view and then they start kind of believing it themselves. So we talk about a con conversion process here. So if, it, if anything, internalization is a very powerful form of social influence and certainly can get people to behave in extreme manners. Now, the last type of, of conformity that they do ask us to have a look at is called identification. Now, in the old spec, this was actually taken out because people found it quite confusing. Kalman though originally wrote about it and so therefore we've included it in the new spec and it's definitely worth having a look at. So this is a slightly different because it says this is when an individual adopts the attitudes or behaviours because they want to be associated with a particular personal group and it's this association that becomes quite important. I suppose if we also look at the word identification. Okay. You might be sitting there thinking that you do identify with a particular group of people, okay? And part of identifying with a group of people is that you might then want to do the things that those people do. And this is actually the type of conformity that we're talking about. Now, what it says here is that we, we adopt their behavior or their attitudes because we identify. So unfortunately, that means we're gonna have both factors of compliance and also factors of internalization. Okay, because the compliance side is that we are choosing to do the behavior and it may not be internalized yet, but because we want to be part of the group, we do it. It could also mean that we end up becoming committed to that particular behavior and we end up doing the behavior kind of more long term, both publicly and privately. OK, so think of kind of groups that people often join. You know, you've got your goths, you've got your rockers, sk skater boys, you know, that type of idea. Think of kind of what people do to be part of that particular group. Certainly. I don't know what the groups are now, what people do kind of identify with, but it's certainly worth kind of considering if there are types of groups that people want to identify with. Okay. So, as I've said before, identification, identification does have elements of both compliance and internalization. So, I perhaps want to identify with goths. Okay. So, what I see here is I see that the attitudes and and behaviors are of goths are right, okay? Maybe I think, you know, the way that they view things, maybe the lyrics of the songs that they listen to and things like that kind of really resonates with me, okay? However, the reason I adopt them is not 
to do anything other than to be accepted by the group. Okay, so for example, um, I mean, I, I really don't actually know enough, enough about goths, but certainly I, I might wear certain types of clothing. So I think that I can wear dark clothing or dye their hair black or, or something along those lines. So those types of behaviours, it's not really kind of, I'm not doing them for any real reason other than if I do, then I'm going to be identified with that particular group. So identification could actually be as a result of something like somebody smoking. So I might feel uncomfortable, I've joined a new group, uh, joined a new school, I don't quite know who to, who to fit in with or where to fit in, and I see some kids smoking, and they seem to be nice to me. And so I sm smoke as well in order to be accepted by them. Now the key to this as well is that over time, I may stop doing that behavior because I no longer want to be part of their group. I no lo longer want to be identified with their group. And we find that actually a lot of people who were goths, you know, five, 10 years later are no longer goths. Now, of course, there will be people who totally internalize the behavior and it is still who they are and they continue to be it. But the key to identification is that it is just often time dependent. It happens over a period of time and then we kind of move on to a different group or perhaps we're happy to identify with who we are, who we feel like we want to be. Now, this is not meant to be a, a, a difficult kind of video. In fact, it's a very simple section. What we find most of the time is that they're gonna be relatively short questions it uses the word explain, so there's no kind of deeper thinking, evaluation, discussion type of thing um, meant here, and it just says what is meant by internalization, but the key here is to look at the three marks here, so therefore the depth of understanding, we can't just write a one word answer, we can't just say internalization is about um, adopting the views because they're our own, that would not get you more than say one mark, we have to go a little bit deeper in terms of this. The same thing with explain what is meant by compliance. We can't just say, oh, it's, um, it's a type of conformity that leads to, to um, changing our behavior to fit in. We need to go deeper because the three marks means more marks. So that's all I have um, in the lesson. We would have thought a bit about these questions and certainly it's worth kind of seeing whether you can sit down and actually write um, a couple of sentences to explain each of these two answers without looking at your notes. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this. This is not going to be as dynamic or interactive as a lesson, but it is certainly there to help you to kind of recap on the content. Okay, that's all for now. I hope.